Man, it just it seems like we can't get away from these brothels, bro. First, <laughs> first Game of Thrones, then House of the Dragon, and now Andor, bro. What's, what's going Star Wars? On? <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. But welcome back to the Why I'm Geeked show, man. This is episode sixty nine, and you know we here, man. It's your boy G and the homie Chrissy Light. Say what's good to the people, man. What's up, everyone? Hope y'all doing good. Hope y'all ready for all these shows, movies dropping now, because we're finally in the area where we got TV shows coming out left and right that I don't, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. We locked in. We locked mm-hmm. in. But today, uh, we're going to be starting with Andor, and we'll have a little Game of Thrones talk uh, later on in the episode as well. But, I mean, Andor gave us three episodes off the bat, so I'm super excited to get into this. Um, first things first it's just it looks amazing like it's just peak star wars like lighting and not necessarily like show but like just like every time we start a new star wars show i just like they just engulf you in the world immediately so that was like my first big takeaway from the show what about you chris i have to agree like the camera work everything it just it just felt really good to be back in star wars and uh, it, the, this universe is so vast, so I'm not going to remember the planets. I'm not going to remember the names all the time. But seeing it on the screen again, it's just so much potential, so much. Even the ships, man, when they're in space yeah. and you see the ships come out of nowhere. Yeah. Star Wars universe is just so grand and vast that it, it, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always super dope. Um, So, I mean, Andor, man, what like what are your first like initial thoughts on like the show itself at first when i heard of andor i was like this is just the planet they was on that one time but nah it's just it's a person it's a person so uh what are your like initial thoughts on the on the show like first episode well before i I get into that uh you did watch rogue one right i did i didn't like it did you remember that andor's in rogue (laughs) one no (laughs) yo so no i no i remember he was in it i didn't remember That that was his name. I just yeah. I never thought that that was his name. I thought it's it was Cassian, a plan. right? Yes, yeah, Cassian. Cassian Andor. Yep. Yeah. So when this was coming out, I thought it was about the planet. Like I remember seeing yeah. the headlines and everything, and I was just like, "What are they? Are they? Gonna, they're going to do a movie on the stuff that leads up to Andor?" And mm-hmm. I mean, I guess in a way, it technically is a similar story, but n- not. Not a hundred percent. It's just like the events right before the original Star Wars movie, and that's mm-hmm. when Rogue One takes place, anyway. So, All right. I guess I'm wrong, but <laughs> as soon as it started, I think it took me two episodes to get in to, to realize, dang, this is the Rogue One guy. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> I just felt so dumb. I'm like, oh right. my gosh, not now I get it. Okay, so we're gonna learn the groundwork on. Andor and his whole character and his character was pretty cool in, in Rogue One and I did like Rogue One a lot. Mm. Um but so far the first episode I, I was a little snoozy. I I was a little he was cool, but I was right. a little snoozy trying to figure out all right, what are we getting into? And to be honest, it, it's a much more lay the groundwork show. But I've been liking it so far. I've been liking the groundwork right. they've been laying. Uh, I'm glad I finally caught up on who this character is. <laughs> and for three episode premiere, this is kind of what I want for three episode premieres. It, it really gets you a good spot at the end of the third episode. But for three episodes, you get groundwork, you get what the characters are doing, and then you kind of see so much theorizing on, okay, so what's this real plot? Because this is even before Rogue One, so if you've right. seen Rogue One, you know how that ends. Right. So what's going on in this? So overall, it's pretty solid first outing, but what did you think about these first three initial episodes? I'm mean, getting 12. I, right. I ain't gonna cap. I uh, was like initially invested just because I was just like, Star Wars loves getting us a mystery character to begin with. Like, the characters never... Uh, I mean, I guess that's the nature of being in the Empire during this time anyway. But it's just like you don't get a lot of information. You get a lot of like actions happening. So, you know, we start out with um, uh, Cassian 
looking for his sister in this little in brothel. brothel thing. So it mm-hmm. was just like, okay, this is this is interesting because I knew, I knew he was the guy from the Rogue One movie just because of um, the the next thing I saw him in, which was Narcos Mexico. So Diego Luna, I was like, oh, I know this guy. So I was like, <laughs> I connected that at first, but I didn't. I still didn't connect that that was his name i just thought it was like oh this this is the home planet of andor i guess i don't know but um to even bring it back like in time you know what i'm saying i just i even with even with uh rogue one i didn't know what i was going into watching back then so like first initial watch i was like not a fan of that movie but mm-hmm. just because of the res, I was like, man, like I like the end with Darth Vader part, but I was just like, what was the point of this? So I was just like, <laughs> you know, and um, but in the grand scheme of things, obviously it makes sense. But as far as the first three, I think you said it best already that, um, you know, we get a beginning, middle end episode and, you know, that ending leads us into a whole new journey, you know, and it was just like it felt good. It felt like real Star Wars. Mm -hmm. and um especially when you know you have to establish not necessarily a new character but you know we're finally getting insight to that character so you know establishing the people around him which is very important which like you said in the first episode was a little snoozy because it was like we're cutting back and forth between memories and when it was in those memories we didn't get no real dialogue because it was a whole different language and stuff like that so overall you know i'm still messing with the show um but how did you feel about like the 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 different classes we saw because it gave me very much so cyberpunk vibes just because of the, like the language that they used but obviously it's still the empire like overarching so, type yeah thing. so it's, it's always weird because i guess we're they're tired of doing the empire all the time so right. we got this little i don't know what you want to call them though. yeah yeah I, call, the, I, call, the I just space say corpo. Police. Yeah. Yeah. Corpo. <laughs> the space popo, the corpo. Yeah. And then you have on uh, uh the what was the planet called? I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Canari or something like that. Well, I know he, he he's Canari or whatever. But that yeah. home planet, I was thinking, so so is that the because I did not realize his name's Andor, and then on the mm-hmm. final planet in Star Wars, it's Endor or whatever. I was mm-hmm. thinking that's the 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 um not Wookies, the, oh, the Ewoks. Lo- yeah, Ewoks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're seeing the hum like human versions on that planet. I'm like, okay, that's oh, okay. where he's from or whatever. And then right. I'm like, bro, <laughs> what is going on? Different. So yeah. when on when we're on that planet, we get characters that don't we don't even know what they're saying. They're talking mm-hmm. to each other. But there's no subtitles, no nothing, which was unique because I think I've seen it happen a couple times, but normally it's like to hide a plot point. But mm-hmm. it just seems like we don't know what they're saying at all. And then we go back to Corpo where we get a, one of the main characters, it seems like, who is kind of like a happy-go-lucky, like sergeant, like a uh, cop that's trying to rise up the ranks and prove mm-hmm. and his leader is like hey don't even worry about it we're just trying to you know make everything sound good to the empire we know we're holding everything down don't get into anything too sticky and he's just one of those like go-getters and wants to do this justice and find out all the details that goes on in the planets and you know he doesn't listen and then we have kind of what um cassian places where you know people are struggling yeah working class just trying to make ends meet smuggling Mm -hmm. um so you get those three different dynamics. One where we don't they're living out the woods. Right. Smugglers under the empire, probably the like the resemblance of the beginnings of the rebels, mm-hmm. pretty much them showing, hey, you know what, we, we can't live under this no more. And then the corpo people that just kind of do what they want still and I mean, technically, they go out of bounds to try to find what went down. So right. that that from the three classes, that, that that's the main thing I got. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It was one of those things where I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting. Like it, it, it had me invested. Cause I was like, okay, is this just going to, you know, be a thing while we're here or like, how does this, how is this going to relate like after, you know, 
obviously he's got he's got to escape because he's going to end up being like because we got we got this knowledge of of Rogue One, so there's yeah. like there's not as much mystery to that, but it's like the aftermath and trying to figure out like you know you know how is this going to affect everybody? Like I got so many different vibes from um like just the way they set up some of these scenes from his like if you want to call it his his guardian um you know having conversations with the 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 corpo uh People. security team yeah and you know just the way that they was treating everybody the the, the actual uh attitude towards you know how how they're policing you know these mid rim or outer rim yeah. sectors like it's and they're a, not even it's the a empire whole culture. right it's a whole culture that you know you can tell i was like i was like oh i was like i want to know like more about this because it's like it's it's a different side because i've always wondered like and, and and it's been one of those things i've wanted from these shows that star wars has been do been producing which is you know what is life really like living in the empire we done seen the how the bottom is but like what makes somebody turn into a corpo or turn into a stormtrooper? Like, what is those, what are they offering that makes, you know, it all worth it? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, you get to start to see how, you know, a lot of these characters are like, kind of like two sides of the same coin. Just one went one way and the other went the, you know, a different way, you know, it's all resentment, but it's like, you know, there's paths that you can take. And you can see like the different uh I don't wanna call them radicals, but like the different levels of commitment, you know, with uh you know Andor or Casa and uh the the smuggler guy, I forgot I don't remember his name, if he even said his name, but you know, he can tell he is a lot more radical in the sense of like, you know, he has this other thing that he's working on. But mm -hmm. also um the 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 guy that gave uh the other corporal guy this sounds so bad because we don't know the names of these people <laughs> but um just like the the lieutenant and then like you know the captain or whatever you want to call yeah, it but the sure. cap the the a lot of these people haven't seen you know battle before or don't have that much experience so like their idea of what it, it it means to like be in power is different from when you step foot in real like real time you know what i'm saying yeah. like what a real community is so like i like that aspect of it too um but you know uh how how do you feel about Cass's like just i guess motive you know cuz this whole thing has been about his sister so far and i mean i was going to just bounce this one back to you yeah I after watching these three episodes, because we're just gonna go through all of them, mm -hmm. what are you? What's your feeling about what is the main goal of Andor? Like completely. Well, we see you see three episodes, but yeah, are you getting a feeling of what this storyline is gonna bring to us? I'm, I'm feeling like he is searching for like his only because he came up the way he came up in life, like as a child was yeah. like a scavenger warrior type kid so like he wasn't looking that far into the future you know and even when he saw the ship and stuff he just started beating stuff down like that i'm not saying he's a new anathol or anything but <laughs> like <laughs> it was like one of those things where it's like okay you could see like oh he knows that like dang we're out here living like this in the woods but they got this you know so there's there's a resentment there but uh i think like it's weird to think that like because we've heard that all of his tribe ever got bodied after the fact of the them finding the um the Crash mining planet yep. yeah so him still having hope to possibly find his sister i don't know what evidence he has that will lead him to that so you know there's a, a lack of motivation right there but to me the the real question is what's going to drive him to you know inevitably join the rebellion and but but do you think that the reveal of like the sister is something important like is it going to be a actual reveal or we're 
Oh, okay. So you're just... Yeah, I don't think we're actually ever going to see her. We might, like, she might be alive, but... Yeah. Like, I don't think we're actually going to get there. Just because it's it's like, it'd be too easy. Because then what what would be the purpose of him? Like, he has to have suffered a certain loss. And the only person right now that would... I guess drive him to that would be his sister or um, the girl. What's her name? Bix. But Mm -hmm. even then they have a a different type of relationship where it's like, that's not the love of his life or anything, but he still cares about the people that he has grown to, you know, grow up with and love. So it's, I think, I think it will have more to do with that journey of having a purpose of finding your sister, being so focused on that one thing and then losing that and then you're looking for something else to believe in essentially is what okay. i think it's going to be but okay that's believable for sure yeah that that'd be the simple thing now i don't know i still don't know how we get there like i'm still yeah. clueless to that because this all three episodes is really just one big episode to like a, a big prequel essentially yeah so like just the uh, origin story of of the whole situation, how he gets in the hands of the potential spy or potential right. rebel person that leads him down Rogue One's path. Right, because it's like, who is that guy? Who is this buyer? Dude? Like the way <laughs> exactly. they set him up was like we've seen him before, and I'm like, bro, I have no idea who this Super is. Super sneaky. <laughs> yeah, and even like uh, the the material that he was trying to buy, like he was just. It was like he was throwing curveballs in there, like for no reason. Like we had no reason to think that he even had a dad, or like yep. we knew about his sister. But it was like, it like was just like, had so much information already, and then didn't yeah. even want the device. Anyway, I was like, right. okay, He's something's like, going on. Right, and I'm like, bro, he can't be that hard to find if you knew this is where he was at, you know? So, and can it be that important if you knew where he was right. at? Like, is he the chosen one? Like, what is, yeah. <laughs> like, like, what is, what is the thing? Because this is this is different too. Because this is a show where, like, obviously, the Mandalorian has a, a certain amount of um, Mandalorians or whatever, so that you know he's not necessarily able to use the Force, but he is like, you know, he is he's higher on the scale, Force sensitive, right? But like with Andor, it's like. I mean, yeah, he might be a little bit, but not enough to warrant, like, this whole show, like, as far as, like, oh, I need to find this guy because, like, unless he's the father, you know what I'm saying? Which I don't <laughs> think that's I know. They're going to they're gonna pull it again. <laughs> right, right. So it's just, like, <laughs> I'm, still try- I'm still trying to figure that part out. And, yeah. you know, what's the hurry? Like, what does he know? That he's like, I got to get out now. Like, obviously, like, he owed a lot of people money, you know? Mm-hmm. But I was expecting it to be, like, he was search like, the normal Star Wars thing where it's a scrapper kid that, you know, wants to get off world. And, like, that was the last piece he needed, the last piece of credits that he needed to get off world in some ship. And then... uh then go to wherever he needs to go but i don't know where he needs to go like it's just yeah. it's still it's still a big mystery but i'm I'm enjoying the little ride though you know what i'm saying for the most yeah. part but um let me see oh we got to talk about tim bro we got to talk about tim this is the biggest l man ever <laughs> tim I is promise. the biggest l man ever i don't know who's worse him or cole bro because i mean at least cole's still alive he just he survived you know what i'm saying but <laughs> Like Tim, I don't know, I like this man Tim. Me neither. I'm gonna just come out and say it. Me neither, bro. But like, why? Like, I just don't understand why, bro. Like, obviously he said like you got her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like so if y'all didn't, if y'all are tuning in, y'all maybe I don't know if you're watching this and never seen the show or not or got to part of the show. Basically, Tim is a rat, right? And <laughs> Uh, Tim is one of those characters that it's just like from the time he gets on screen, you're just, you know, liable to just not like him, you know, just because he's given the main character glary looks. He just super hostile for no reason. Um, and today the reason got him killed, bro. 
they got him got him bodied you know and he did it to himself he the one that called stuff in for no reason like like even if he didn't call him in the plot will essentially still be the same we just don't get that uh corporal side of like that whole little chase scene so like i i do like that aspect of it but like i just don't know what he was expecting to do you know like what was he this trying to accomplish extra super sugary sweet i don't get it he <laughs> called in the cops his girl checked him for it and was like right. i can't believe you do that like i i never told you he was a canarian or whatever it's called mm -hmm. and then when his girl gets caught by the popo he's like who did this i'm like <laughs> Use your eyes, and then the guy's like, "Don't yeah. move," and he's like, "No." <laughs> it was just this, like this makes him dumb. I just, right. I was done with him. I was like, they shot him. Right. The girl cried. I was like, I don't even care. Tim was me dumb. neither. Yeah, me neither. I didn't care either, right? Because I was just like, bro, you did that for one. You did it to yourself, and two, it's just like, what does that do other than getting some tears from the girl? You know what I'm saying? Because obviously she messed with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, what more do you need? Like, and what's crazy, this man, Tim, he hit it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> and then that happened. He hit it one more. Like, I was like, this like, guy. I got bust down one more time. I know it's up for me <laughs> after this, but I just got, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, the man couldn't even sleep that night, at that same night, because he knew what he did. And I'm yeah. just like, that's a bold move, bro. That's a bold Tim. move. L, -L man um, Tim, for sure. Facts, facts. So, uh, let me see. What else? I can't what believe else? that was yeah. one of your things. I, I I forgot about him. I was gonna bring it up, but I was like, hey, I'm like, I ain't gonna do it. But I, that man. It's because his name was Tim, bro. That was that was the most non Star Wars name that we didn't heard in a long. It time. was random because <laughs> we got Bix and Why? Then Tim. What <laughs> was it? Tim Cassian. The other yeah. guy was like, it wasn't Luther. It was like, it was something different, like L L Lutheran or something like that. It was yeah. something. Extra. Bossed or based then, or something like that. It was, and, and then we get Tim. I right. like, come on, right? So how, how do you, I got this down? How, how do you feel about the stakes? Did you feel like the stakes were pretty high, like for the show initially? I mean, it's it's a little weird because you know it's not necessarily the Empire. I always feel like when right. the Empire is on screen, it's a little bit more sinister. Because mm -hmm. to me, these, these cops look extra extra lame. They're in <laughs> this blue and orange suit. But it was kind of cool seeing like the community like tap the cans and saying right. like, oh, the cops are coming. And it, it, it's just that intimidation factor really isn't there for these people. And I'm just wondering if they're going to come back like leveled up type thing. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's all I'm wondering. It, they just didn't seem equipped for this actual mission. And I mean, technically, they're not supposed to be doing this mission in the first place. So right. I ain't getting no intimidation. But what would what, you think about that whole scene when they were trying to catch him did you really think they had a chance nah because they was giving me mall cop bro like that's what i was thinking of when i saw him. i was like yo they're just a mall cop but i mean they had blasters and everything but they it was never like i felt like all oh, these are stormtroopers or these are commandos or like you know this is a security team like they're not their job is not what they're doing like they're doing way more than what they was even tasked to do so I like the fact that, you know, things got way worse than we're supposed to be like the like literally straight up the actual like worst possibility for them happened to them. And dude was mm -hmm. just in shock. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they even have a way to get off world, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, what do you do now? Like you're rise, you're you're thinking that this is going to be your next payday and this is going to be your next like claim to fame. And then, you know. You think that you're not necessarily radical, but you're like for the cause. But then you meet this other guy that's really, really like for the cause. And you already are feeling weird about it. Like, I'm like, man, maybe this wasn't such a good idea, but I'm here now. You know, mm -hmm. you give the most like lame uh, speech, pre-game pre speech of yeah. all time. And you just send people out that's just not trained for this like i like seeing the horrors of combat getting you know right your buddy getting blown up i mean right. they, they were fighting for once that life. once that one guy got in the ship and then flew off and yeah. it was uh chained to one of the the workers chained it to 
a, yeah. a pile of scrap. I like. That I mean, part. he blew yeah. up. Like he was running for a long. Like he was running. He didn't pay attention yeah. to nothing. And like, and his own squad mates were like, "Who is that? What was that? Was that them?" And they're like, right. "No, it, it mean they'd be behind us, right?" And like, mm-hmm. just chaos of a bad leadership, bad scenario, and just completely unfit to like be in that position in the first place. Yeah, man. And it was just like they super fumbled the bag right there. Like I like I like what the chasing added to the stakes as far as like. I never really felt like they were super in danger just because of the like the level of like stakes that we've seen in Star Wars before. But for this show by itself, this being pre um uh what's it called? Uh pre Star Wars, pre pre Star Wars Rogue One. Pre Rogue One, where, you know, he has experience just like being uh uh surviving, right? But like pure battle experience, like that's something that, you know, you can't really get nowhere else. So, uh, I got it seeing, now. Yeah, seeing seeing the the beginnings of that was cool, um, and just seeing how one track minded Casa is because like he was trying to go back and get that that little uh, machine piece or whatever because he's just like, oh, this is like the one thing that I had that would have made things right technically, but now I got this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just like, all right, well, here we go. Like he has a ship, so you know, it's it's that essentially that problem solved. But it's... and and well, that scene was kind of cool because like when he was a kid, him getting on the ship and flying to the sun was like him right. joining to like a entirely new world. And mm-hmm. it seems like him getting on this ship with this guy is joining him into a entirely new world, like yet again. Right. So. Like, yeah, and and the speech too, because he was like, they was talking about like how the empire, like you could just, you could just do whatever. Like they think they're so good, they think they're so big yeah. and bad. They stuck up. Yeah, they're fat. Like they're just mm-hmm. like you know, they're doing whatever. And this is not even the empire. This was yep a, a subset. That's a good empire. point that you brought so, in. It's the subset, and they just as cocky. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's a great start, man. That's my, that's my main takeaway. It's a great start to a series. It's crazy that it's already three episodes, so we're technically a quarter of the way through. But it feels like, like even though we didn't make that much like logistical progress, and like yeah, we got like two we months. Go that, yeah, we didn't really even go that far in time or distance, like as far as like what we didn't see. Cause it can get a little slow, like in the middle, like once things are setting up. But Bruh, it's just if like they did now, not do that three episodes, yeah. oh, I'd probably be like, after well, two, happened. what is going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, facts. So it it it's it's turning out to look like it's going to be something something good. Yeah, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's going to be the Mandalorian or anything, yeah. but it's. I think it. I think it'll probably. Eh, Nah, I don't know if it has the star power to beat Boba Fett, but it's. I I think it's it narrative why narrative why I feel like it's better than Boba Fett already technically, yeah. but a definitely different atmosphere and tone completely. Yeah, for sure. This is the this is the Star Wars that I like. Like this le- level of seriousness and just uh, I don't want to say effort, but it's like. It's, it's something it's adding something new to yeah it doesn't really have that disney flavor on it right i, I don't know I, I feel like they didn't throw any disney flavor onto this mm-hmm. at all it just kind of feels like its own vision from the director who's i don't even know the director I'll, yeah figure that we'll, out later. we'll figure it out <laughs> that's, that's the weeks <laughs> go on <laughs> but uh switching things up man that's that's our our Andor talk. We got to We got to give our, our Game of Thrones recap or, or House of the Dragon recap, um, just because it's episode six and we got another banger. We got another banger, bro. And it was definitely my favorite episode. I know I say that every week, right? Really? But this was, man. I was hurt. I was hurt after this episode, bro, um, because it was just like I don't know if it's. I don't know if you would consider it symbolism or something else but it was just like the fact of like the way the episode started and the way the episode ended you know like life and death and it's just it's just game of thrones at its at its best but um chris like so how do you how did you feel about it since i gave my little take on it so far but like you know quick thought and then we'll start breaking the episode down a little bit 
A hundred percent. I kind of think it's a, a lay the groundwork. We did that time skip thing. Yeah. And, you know, we have to establish kind of where every single character is at in this point in time. Because it, it's a major time skip. I mean, we had to figure out, all right, is that is the king still around? Like, that was a, a question at one point. And you're like, oh, there he go. There you go, looking extra old. Grandpa. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he was looking worse than Grandpa. He was looking... <laughs> he's holding on and zombie. from the last episode we was thinking okay he's really struggling out here i mean yeah. i even thought they faded to white i'm like all right get him out of here <laughs> but this man is, is still holding on yeah got a, a whole bunch of kids um rainier got a whole bunch of kids yeah. we even have to learn the act the actresses and actors like new mannerisms right we, we had to sit there and figure out who Rhaenyra's uh uh baby daddy is I mean, so a lot of groundwork, yeah, a, a lot of groundwork from this episode, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I hated it. I'm not gonna say I loved it, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it was cool to see a time skip and figure out where we're at. Yeah, I feel like this is the most successful time skip we done had, um, just because. I probably agree. The mm -hmm. the first two, it was just like, okay, we time skip for what, you know, like. But just to it, speed up, speed up the story, it seemed like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And this one, it felt like it was warranted because a lot of stuff did happen, but like going through three pregnancies with Rhaenyra and then two more or one more with uh, Allison, like not Allison. not a lot of stuff could be happening, especially if it's a time of peace. And you know? uh, Damon, right? But Damon wasn't even there. Like Damon wasn't yeah. even like. In Westeros, essentially. Yeah, but all or, his or entire Westeros family, he, he was getting it on. Right. So, <laughs> so, um, like you said, we started off with Rhaenyra, and she got three boys now, and they all have brown hair, which tells you that her and Lenor did not do the thing. You know, I thought at least they would get one. You know what I'm saying? Because even Allison said it like, one is a mistake, right? Two is, three is an insult at this point. You know what I'm saying, and it's 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 set up for the the running theme of this episode, which was resentment, and it's for me it, it happens at all levels. What like you can look at pretty much any two, not necessarily the couples, but duos, and figure out like okay, who's really resenting who? You know what I'm saying for and for what? So, um. Obviously, you know, Lenore and Rhaenyra are still like on as good as terms as you can in this type of arrangement, but it was still weird to see like, okay, y'all didn't make one like baby, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just like, dang, that's, that's, that's actually kind of tragic. Uh, and everybody's acting like they can't see was, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just like, it's plain as day. Well, I feel like. It's not everyone acting like it's plain as day. The king is purposely like yeah. turning his eye. And I'm like, yeah. This man, even still, when he's an old age skeleton, is still just like that's my baby eh, girl. I don't, yeah, I don't care what the kingdom thinks. I'm gonna just go with my plan. Right. That's my baby girl. She's the heir. It is what it right. is. Like time he, jump later. Don't care. He don't care. He don't care. I'm like, yeah, not blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the gray hair, because because still Valerians would would still have the the like, mm -hmm. brown hair. Something's wrong. Right. Like <laughs> right. especially on, especially when we see that Damon had kids with uh his sister, uh, uh Lena's sister, Lena. So it's like we know what this is supposed to look like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we know what this is supposed to look like, and it just it just goes to show like the the they still like the beef is still up. Like it's just like did did the king actually say in the episode? Oh, he has the same nose as his father, or something like that. Was that just a Twitter meme? Because people, I don't people know, have, I don't remember that. The little, the little puppet where it was like, it looks just, it looks just like you, you two, right. and the, 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 right? <laughs> like, I, 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 so many, that. I swear he said something. I've seen so many good memes on Twitter about yeah. this, like, and it was this, this it was one where they had like the family tree of uh everybody and they had like mm -hmm. the, the um the little lines going to all of them and they had you know obviously Lenore and Rhaenyra 
the kids mm-hmm. and the person close to you they was like y'all know y'all know good and good and well and Lenor ain't they ain't his kids like <laughs> he got his line going there for it. yeah um but that was like a fun way to start off the episode because it was just like you know we got to see um that whole interaction but also like we saw how Rhaenyra was just a, a dog, bro. Like, she just wasn't finna go like that. Like, Allison definitely stepped into her, like, villain-esque role and yeah. demanding to see the baby right after it being born. And it was just, like, a dick move. And I was just like, wow. Like, you couldn't, like, the, the hair's not going to change. You know what I'm saying? She's not going to trade the baby out for somebody else. Like, so what's the what's the rush, you know, It's a little point? sneaky. She was like... I- I know that ain't their baby. I'm a, I'm gonna see it day one. Right. Two two seconds as soon as it's born, I want to see the hair. Right. And she was like, again, yeah. this is crazy. And she and Rhaenyra's had all boys too. So. Oh yeah. Oh. Like I mean, uh, Aegon got a little brother, but you know, maybe that has something to do with to with it too. I mean, everybody essentially was supposed to have three kids at this and point. She, they have a daughter too, don't they? Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Allison, Allison, and um, Viserys yeah. have another daughter. Yeah, so since now they got four kids. Well, it's, he has four kids. <laughs> he has four kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has four kids. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, we also saw like like you said like the king is down bad. Essentially, you know, he got one arm now, so they they finally cut it off. You know, I, I didn't see this maester this episode, so it sounds like he got he got a replacement that's good. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's it's one of those things where I was like, okay, what 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 are they trying to show us in this time skip? Like, what is the real purpose of this thing? Because mm-hmm. for there to be another major one, I'm gonna need something. I'm gonna need something from the kids, from everybody, essentially, to warrant this to happen because. I was expecting a lot from an infrastructure standpoint, um, like from Rhaenyra and also Bayman, just to, you know, strengthen their pools as far as like their claim to the throne. I thought that would have been a thing because I like Allison's pretty much at a stalemate. You know what I'm saying? She can't get no higher, essentially. But I was expecting to see a little bit more from Rhaenyra and Damon. Mm-hmm. So how how did you feel about that? Like, did you did you, you know, was it to your expectations or like what? I mean, I agree with you. Uh, from Damon and Rhaenyra, they're kind of still at hold even after this time jump. But to me, the big uh, reveal was the fact that Allison really has changed her mindset about who should be on the throne. Because mm-hmm. when we saw her last, she kind of got that wisdom from her dad that you need to prepare Aegon for to rule because the, the kingdom's not going to accept him. And then we go here. Except uh, Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra. Yeah. Re- prepare Aegon for the throne because the kingdom's not going to accept Rhaenyra. Even though the king is being stubborn as ever, you got to prepare uh, your son to be the ruler. And in this episode, we see it heavy that she is 100% team Aegon. And then he, he goes up to Aegon being a wild thing uh messing with his little saucers out the window for no reason that was just <laughs> game of thrones that was a what familiar can be- looking re- window too that was yeah. a very familiar looking window and it she's like you, one for you, something you, else like you're gonna be the king and then he's like no I'm, I'm not gonna challenge the rule and she's like what what are you talking about and yeah i just kind of felt like allison in the past would have kind of been okay if that was his stance but mm-hmm. now she's really pushing like no uh-uh you will be the ruler type thing and even though he's like i don't really want to you know right. i'm not in- interested at all in the throne right. or that's or her the big, game that's his big sister yeah so you it's know? just like yeah it's just kind of like we see allison truly has evolved to she values the throne enough that she wants Aegon to take it right and um rhaenyra is just messing up the entire time because she couldn't even secure her claim to the throne by having a real dang heir. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Co- yeah. Like, they, sh- she is like her dad, bro. She <laughs> did not yeah. want to have one child. So then at least the kingdom, if they don't like her, they can be like, all right, let's, 
you know, let, let, let's try the little queen thing out and maybe, you know, maybe 20 years, we just say, <laughs> give, give it to the boy. Give it to the, right. the Valerian and Targaryen. And right now he's a Valerian, then he'll turn Targaryen. I'm going to take that. Mm-hmm. You know? No, she's just, she, she's been dropping L's since this time skip. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we just see that Alicent truly has changed too. We're going to make egg on it. She is not fit to be on the throne. She is clearly been lying to us ever since this Game of Thrones thing's been starting, and things have not changed with her third baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Team Targaryen all the way, but it's a, it's weird seeing Alicent because, like you said, like her, her dad put her in a particular place, like kind of trauma dumped on her because yeah. he's been holding this in for a long time because he recognized the position that he put her in essentially but like it seemed like this was the first time that like she really expressed that to um Aegon and uh, you can see the fear in Aegon's eyes he's like oh this I've never seen my mom like this you know yeah like chill so, out yeah so and I don't know what it is like it just never seems like you would think like I feel like the only the only real heirs that have been prepared to take the throne by force or like just skill wise was definitely the snows or not the snows, but the, uh, uh, Starks. Like they're the only ones that really prepared. And I know I'm going to game of Thrones, but they're the only mm-hmm. ones that was really like, even like when it came to Joffrey or, uh, the Lannisters, like, you know, none of them, like, sword fighting wise or anything was anything like pretty good but all of the starks were good warriors and it's just like yeah because what else the could you be doing defeated them in in battle right and the starks were with them right so it's like what else could you be doing like that like you're not preparing you're not you're essentially not preparing them for this you know what i'm saying like i guess you have to do it in secret yeah because they got dragons but, though that's that that's the whole like outcome when when you have dragons yeah there's there's no better army than to have a dragon you have nothing that's to true. offer a, a family that has dragons and that's why it was kind of lame for Rhaenyra to not secure her right to the valerian side of the dragons i mean yeah. <laughs> true they're, they're talking about us or them not having like dragons haven't been born and stuff like that mm-hmm. and we know that's a big big deal later on in game of thrones Right, that, you know, dragons haven't been born in in years. Yeah, like who knows if these things will hatch. Right, and even and, then, like the the I thought essentially like the the dragons. I was like, dang, it's been ten years and the dragons are already shrinking. But that was just the baby mm-hmm. dragon. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, okay, I was like, yeah, okay. a, a little baby one. Yeah, but I like the fact that we got to go into the dragon pit and see what that really looks like and mm-hmm. like how like the. I don't know whose dragon it was, but the dragon was like, you know, you ain't supposed to be down here. Like, I ain't gonna char you up just because yeah. I know I know who you are. But I was just like, oh, that was that was a fun thing, um, just just to see. But you know, speaking of speaking of Aegon, right? Looks like wild wow, boy. Yeah, he's just another maybe not as cynical as Joffrey, but he has those elements of like arrogance that you know he's always supposed to win like all this other stuff right and um just seems like the worst big brother essentially you know <laughs> what i'm saying like i was just like man like and and allison told him too because it's just like this is our house this is it mm-hmm. and they're, they're growing up together you know but like that whole scene started off so wholesome and then cole just clipped it like he was just like nah cold and change yeah like and i thought even then like he was the only one that really didn't get a um a time skip character like everybody else like all the kids he got barely them. looks older to me yeah he doesn't look older at all i mean because yeah. he's not but it's just like yeah like he they gave him like a slight beard but i'm just like right didn't change it didn't change it didn't much. change at all yeah um but you know that Allison and and his still him still believing in this whole honor thing, it just makes sense for 
like how two faced both of them are and why Aegon is the way that he is. Because if she's the one that's raising him and Cole is the one that's teaching him, oh, he's just going to be the worst. Like, you know, he's just a setup for disaster. So, um, you know, as far as that, how how you feeling about Aegon and, and you know, his his new role? Because it's it's up from here. Like, you know, I mean, this this man is just is a wild, a wild boy. And uh, I'm excited to see what it is because he even wanted to blame his cousins. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's his cousins for why they bullied his brother. All right. <laughs> so it's just like this dude just has no care about. He's just one of those characters where it's like, yeah, my family's rich. I don't really care about none of this. I really don't care about this lifestyle at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool with just chilling around doing nothing. And (laughs) his mom's like, no, you're going to be king. And he's just happy-go-lucky, like, all right. I I don't care for any of this. I don't care about the realm. Right. I don't care about y'all. I got me a dragon. He has a dragon, right? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't seen it yet, though. We haven't seen it yet, but he has like a... this man gave his brother a pig with wings. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit like he really does not care about anything we've seen in any <laughs> episode. So it's just like wild boy, don't care at all. A little bit of a bully. Yeah, he's just set up to be a crazy guy. Yeah, can't wait yeah. to see more. <laughs> right, right. We got it. Like because one of those things that that happened this episode is that the kids finally have a motive they found it, it because before there was no like they didn't have a lot of lines but the lines that they had where was just like they was there you know it wasn't like something super prolific or anything but now um with the the baby daddy of uh Rhaenyra's kids being gone and then also yeah. uh you know even um Damon's wife being gone you know like Who's yeah. gonna get who's gonna get her dragon? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a lot happening for the kids. And we'll talk a little bit more about Damon um uh, in in a second here. But, you know, I was really curious. I'm like, okay, are we gonna are they gonna offer us anything more than, you know, what we're used to when it comes to like kids of the of the king? Like and it was pretty much what I expected. But um next I wanna talk about Damon, bro. Damon, 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 Damon and Lena, because her name mm-hmm. we've been saying Lenora this whole time, but it's Lena. It's Lena. It's okay. Lena, and um, you know, this is like one of my favorite parts of the episode because it was just like you could see that they like are a real team, you know what I'm saying? And then like, like what I was expecting from Rhaenyra, Damon was actively doing, you know, essentially because he. He's it's been ten years, so you know, like his brother ain't dying no time soon. You know, I mean, maybe, but like <laughs> it's been ten years at this point. So those dreams of, I guess, rule and trying to, you know, not necessarily dethrone his brother, but work his way to the throne, have kind of subsided. Like he's kind of like calmed down a little bit. I still feel the drive of him to figure something out, but you can tell like. From a morale standpoint, he's still trying to figure it out, you know. So, like, what do, what do you think about like just this whole um, scene of Damon and Lenora, you know, at the at that at that uh, castle and and the what is it a deal? I guess like what yeah. the proposal, the proposal of them, you know, basically selling their dragons off, essentially, or the use of their dragons to the highest bidder i i think damon is, is about to awaken i think he's been asleep for 10 years yeah he's about he's he's gonna turn into his old ways again and it, they kind of hint at it where his wife was like like why are we doing this we don't need to do this and it kind of reminds me of like what, what you said he's kind of retired ish from playing that little game of thrones or trying to force his way onto the throne or try to right. force his way onto his brother and I, th- I think they even say that, you know, the last battle that he's known for was the battle uh, the at the, yeah, the steps. So it's like, Damon's going to awaken. We didn't fully get the confirmation from this episode, but it's going to happen. Yeah. He, he, even his daughters or, or sons, I can't remember if it's his two girls or what, 
think it's even they're gonna be like, no, like we we shouldn't be doing this, and he's just gonna be like, no, I'm I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take something. We're we're gonna go and conquer stuff like true Targaryens, and them Targaryens yeah. be too proud. I'm yeah. telling you, Damon is gonna come back with vengeance and just be like, you know what? I don't got really much else to do now, and and I've been held off for so long. Let's put these dragons to use. Let, mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and get some more livelihood in my uh midlife crisis because I don't really know how old he is now. Maybe like forty five. Forty five. Dang. Think he like fifty? I think he like thirty five. Oh shit! I, mean, I, th- I thought he was Maybe. like. I thought he was more like like or like, like he might be close to forty. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He was probably close closer to forty. No. But not in his forties so. though. In his forties is kind of wild. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I I definitely I definitely agree with you on that. Um, I think the tension is what is what really went crazy for me this time because it was felt at like the different council meetings. It was felt at the the different dinners and just like everybody is just still kind of walking on eggshells essentially because nothing is settled. You know, everybody's claim to the throne has some type of flaw in it. And for Damon, like I love this conversation with his wife, um, even though it wasn't that long, but it, it showed that he still like he really cared. Like this is the first person you could tell, like other than Rhaenyra, like he really cared about, you know, and even when she asked him, like, do you st- like do you still lust for her and stuff like that? He was just like, no, it's not like that. But it's like we know we know it's like, you know you still do got feelings for her probably but it's just like nah i'm i'm with you though you know what i'm saying and that showed um at the end of the episode as well where they all figure out their different ways of grieving um because the truth is something that like it cuts deep like and i was just mm-hmm. like Tell, tell him G. I was like, bro, like the fact that she was just like the fact that you know, you Spoken can see word. the dis- you can see the disappointment in Damon's like every step, and the kids felt it too because the kids is like like father just ignores me, you know, and Damon can't recognize it because he's too in his own head. And now it's it's just going to be even more so that. So where they go from here, because obviously they're going to go back, but like where they go from here is going to be very, very interesting because they could just be like try dragons, you know what I'm saying? Triforce <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, and go crazy on them. Um, but I mean, shoot, man, like we, where else can we go? Lenore is ready to dip. Cause he just he's been stuck in the castle, quote unquote, doing his. Well, duty. we got the hand. We got the hand. Not 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 the hand. Uh, yeah, yeah, the hand and the 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 son retired oh, yeah. to their keep. Right. But oh yeah, who, who is Allison's hand? It's like a, a he's like uh, a little fingers type character. His um his name is Mr. Sneaky Man. He, Beetle Man. What is his name? Yeah, he's a strong, but. Like the the know. the sneaky one with Allison? Yeah, he's that oh, was his. I'll, that was I'll his. I'll look it up for you. That was his uh dad and his brother. Mm. But yeah, um, but that all started because, like we said earlier, Cole got Cole got um, the baby daddy of Rhaenyra's, uh, hot because he was just like taunting him in front of his kids. And he couldn't take it no more. Beat him down. Now I don't think that I think Cole let that happen just because he just wanted, you know, the satisfaction of like, oh, he's gonna have to go now because he couldn't. Like with with Cole, his whole thing's like he can't stand watching Rhaenyra even look at anybody else. You know, like that's how mm-hmm. down bad he is. So after that fact, like that's when, um. That's when the hand was like, all right, I can't do this in clear conscience because my house is at risk now. So if I can't talk to you plainly because the queen is here, I'm going to just go ahead and dip out because this is just the best option I have. 
you know, like as the hand, he's like the most has been the most impartial and it opens us up to new possibilities because for does he become the hand? I don't think so. I think because he is a strong, right? Yes, but and he, he got Allison's back. I mean, yeah, but now Allison owes him. That's my True. whole thing. So Allison, Allison owes him, and then he is now going to inherit everything that his father and his brother had lined up. So, mm -hmm. is he going to be super greedy and go straight for the hand uh, position now? I don't think so, because I don't think he has that type of relationship with the king. Mm -hmm. um, I think Otto comes back and saves the day. Uh, That's what I think. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, and I was like, because like I. I ain't gonna cap. I did not come up with that theory. Oh, I had a conversation after like the episode came out on the, on the on the uh, movie files panel, and uh, one of the guests, Mac, uh, she brought that to my attention that like, oh, Otto could come back, and I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, because Allison was very naive going into this partnership that obviously her and Beetleman have. And now she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Cause for one, she don't know what he's going to ask for. And two, she's not really built for this. Like you can tell like, yeah, that, now she's completely dirty into it. Like, right. Because when, when I first initially finished the episode, I was super upset at Allison because I'm like, yo, like not the fact that you, you know, sent out to get this hit going but it was the fact that you were upset and just like taken aback when you came when the news came back to what actually happened i'm like what did you think was gonna happen what you know what i'm saying i was just like why are you so cap right now like i was just i was so mad at that because i'm like if you're gonna be this way just go ahead and be this way stop flip-flopping because this whole honor thing it's a front like ain't nobody got no honor for real everybody's fighting for themselves and you just need to go ahead and get with the program. Not that, not saying <laughs> that you need to necessarily go and murk people or anything like that, but just accept, you know, the position that you're in and, and be earnest in making that drink like work for yourself. And it's just like, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't fall for the puppy eyes. I just, I just didn't do it. Um, but like, you know, do do you have anybody else in mind that will end up becoming the hand? No, I, I'm really thinking he's just gonna because now that he has that dirt on her, mm -hmm. and of course everyone in the kingdom knows the real dirt on Rhaenyra. Right, it just puts him in the best position to manipulate anybody in the in the, the right. entire realm. I mean, the queen is dirty. The king uh, is dirty. <laughs> The king is extra dirty. <laughs> he he just has he's finally a character that literally has all the dirt on people, so he can yeah. force them to do something that they rather not, or they can give out the dirt to somebody that causes some type of havoc, and right. then he just plays dumb at the table. You so see? it'd be Otto coming back sounds like a even better plan, and then him yeah. be like, all right, so hmm, I, I have to really use my resources to get rid of this dude because right. he's gonna be extra on team Allison because mm -hmm. I was like a big, a big deal for Allison like yeah no one's team me type thing right so I really like that theory a lot yeah and even like just how you know like because I thought I thought he was going to be I thought he was I thought Corliss was going to be his character like I thought he that was how he was going to um end up like being just because I didn't think like their path to the throne, like with Lenore marrying um a little Mira was just like eh, that's eh. that's a right, you know, like that yeah. gets you closer, like you have a direct path now, but you know, I thought he was gonna leverage that a little bit more. So seeing this death, um, or like him sentencing his brother and his father to that and then also having that whole like monologue at the end of the episode where you know he explains like you know children end up being the parents like biggest weakness or, or biggest crutch and i was just like dang like he's literally talking about himself 
and talking mm-hmm. about everybody else at the same time. I was like, that was kind of that was kind of tough, right? But I, I agree with you in, in thinking that we needed this type of character. Like we was we've been searching for it, you know. And it's easy to come up with these archetypes just because you know Game of Thrones is that already. <laughs> yeah. So like <laughs> building up that was pretty cool. But I still think hands down the the toughest moment for me in this joint was uh Lenor- L- Lena's death. I was about to say Lenora. Lena's death in this episode because she just it just was like dang how for first off how you even get over there by yourself that fast you know without nobody seeing you you know because this she was trying to bear Damon's third child and it just wasn't working so we started out the episode with the birth of a child and then the death of a child and a mother and I thought at first it was gonna repeat uh Viserys's you know uh decision. Yeah. And try to cut her over and whatever, but she just wasn't. She's heard a little bit of it, and she wasn't having it. And I was just like, dang, she was. Such I don't a think great Damon character. was having it either. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. But you could see him hesitate in the sense of thinking about like what you know could happen or whatever. And you know, she said earlier in the episode like she, you know, wanted she didn't want this mundane life. She wanted to you know a death by dragon rider or whatever. Like how yeah. however that whatever that means essentially. Um, and you know, just how seamless that, that transition was to her actual death, which was like, dang, like her, even her dragon was like, yo, like, are you sure you want me to do this? Like, just I could fry anybody else up, you know what I'm saying? But you, and, 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 and it only did like a small burst, like, right. Like, it was like, like got, just enough. You. Yeah. And she like, got, all the right, we're going to do this. Boom. Right, she got she had the biggest dragon too, so I was just like, dang, like I was I was hoping like we would see like a whole little anime moment where <laughs> where uh um uh, what's his name Damon runs through the fire and saves her at the last minute, <laughs> but that would have been <laughs> a little bit too far fetched, uh just because you know Damon can't be touched by fire or whatever. And I was just like, oh, that would have been cool, but I mean. It's up, bro. Yeah, the the show is good. The show is good. Yeah, and uh, I think the last thing was that Rhaenyra left to go to Dragonstone, which is something she should have been did. You know, just because she can't really move the way she need to move while she's sitting under Alicent and King of Harris's thumb. So, and and these rumors are just starting to pile up, and her mistakes are piling up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I don't think I got anything else. You got anything else for this episode, man? Uh, no, 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 no. Just glad this time skip was actually good. House yeah. of the Dragon is definitely a show to watch. It it, it is some peak TV that I'm nice. glad is just around. And I'm and I'm hoping it ends good. But overall, I think they're we're finally getting a good direction with all these characters. Oh, and and one more thing. Mm-hmm. This is another episode. Where they introduce a character and they're gone the same episode. Yeah. Technically, we technically we have met the character before, right? But it's like, it's okay, actress. where are they at? Yeah, yeah. and it's like, mm-hmm. boom, gone. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this got to be like yeah. the fifth episode they've done that. I don't know. Uh, it's crazy I'll work. Watch back again, but yeah. the show's good. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, what you geeked about, man? Oh, smile. Smile oh, no. is dropping this weekend. It's spooky season time. Oof. Oh, I'm hoping this one's good. I'm re- I really am because it's it's just creepy enough to go at like a real late Friday night. Oh, no. And then you just don't want to see no one smiling at you. You don't want to see nobody say like, oh, I hope you enjoyed the time. No, don't be smiling. Uh-uh, <laughs> that, that's what I'm hoping for. Just blank faces walking out and... You know what? I'm I'm going to sleep. I'm not looking at no mirrors when I get home. <laughs> so I, I I'm super geeked about watching Smile, and, and hopefully I'm gonna convince you to get get in that thing. So I don't know, bro. I can't. I don't know if I could do it. I yeah, I know count. you can't do this. The the spooky movies. So. You talking about but, going at night too? That's crazy yeah. work right there. That's yeah. Evil. Nah, if I, I would just be chilling show, in the dark, smiling, <laughs> y'all gonna be like, I gotta get away from this man. This guy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll have so to go matinee. About? I have to go to matinee. Oh. Uh, but let's see. What am I geeked about? I'm geeked about two things, bro. Um, so over the weekend, last weekend, by the time y'all are hearing this, I went to my first film festival, uh, and it was dope. I got a lot of connections and like just meeting people and like the local scene so I can like review a lot of their movies and stuff like that. So that should be fun. It's something I've been wanting to add to my channel just cause you know, we always cover like the big stuff, but it's just, you know, different aspects to it as well. Just cause I love movies in general. So I'm super, I was super glad that I got to do that on Friday. And then also man, one piece, bro. Uh One piece. I done met an admiral. I done met oh, the frost. Nice. I done met a frosty admiral. He just froze Nico solid, bro. She can't go like this. She can't. I don't know. I don't. I got. I gotta keep watching. But that just. I was like, wow. Oh, it's you, it's you're happening. There. It's you're happening. I'm watching One Piece. I, that's why I felt like I was like I'm finally watching One Piece. Two hundred plus episodes in. So. Uh, that's that's what I'm geeked about this week, man. Um, be expecting more and more uh, episodes to drop of uh, clips and then podcasts as well. Um, yeah, man. We, a lot of these episodes are doing really well, so we appreciate everybody that's tuning in. And um, oh yeah, we also got new graphics too. We got we rebranded a little bit as well. So definitely, definitely um, stay tuned with that. We'll be coming to TikTok soon. And we'll be back on Instagram soon. We're just stacking up clips at this point. But appreciate y'all for tuning in. Get, oh, wow. Appreciate y'all for tuning in again uh, for another week, man. Uh, we're going to be hitting the 70s next week. So we, we're moving. Time is flying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Time is flying. But appreciate y'all for tuning in. If you like the podcast, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And on your audio audio platforms, hit that follow button. Oh, that's the first time I chopped up the outro. Man, I was doing so. I was on a streak. <laughs> I was on a streak. But it's all good, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. We'll see y'all next week. And yeah, stay geeked. Peace. Later.